session 7. Uh, I would like to request Anand Kumar Singh and Shah Hussain Ahmed Mahadi. Uh, Hussain Ahmed Mahadi, please continue the session. And the first paper, as we say, is the form session 6, uh, <coughs> Khairul Alam, uh, to present the first paper. Honorable Chairman, so, uh, other uh, distinguished uh, guests and my dear colleagues, welcome to my presentation. Uh, from the very uh, beginning of the morning, I uh, just enjoyed some very good presentation, uh, though I would uh, come up with some um, of my research. Uh, it's all about uh, the mitigation and also as I employed conservation agricultural systems, uh, so uh, there are also resilience and also adaptation issues. And I will also say something about how CA can help uh, recharging the groundwater in the high barren areas as I have intensive research there. So though those are not part of my research, but I, I would not uh, lose the chance to say about. So uh, let's, uh, let's start. Uh, there is some introduction I should say, uh, or I can escape, but uh, from the prehistoric area, uh, from the base area on which uh, uh, the IPCC uh, just showed us the, uh, uh, our greenhouse gas uh, increase and also the global warming. So, and and uh, you, you will see in 2021, the methane emission hits the record high in, in history. But, you know, soil, soil organic matter, and soil health are the foundations of human civilization on the earth. And, and you see, uh, we are talking about global climate change, adaptation, integration of policies, uh, different things, but still, still soil have uh, 24,300 higher uh, a billion metric tons uh, carbon storage. If we, if we even more did, uh, uh, aggravate them, uh, this uh, storage, this would be more uh, harmful for our environment. So, so we need to find out how we can reduce and in every way. So that's why uh, carbon and nitrogen footprint can be a very uh, footprinting or other footprinting also. But I uh, worked firstly on carbon and nitrogen footprinting for an intensive rice-based cropping system in our country. So I will show that. So you see every, every uh, uh, being in the, in the world have, have footprints. But the peculiar thing is human being. It have many footprints because we have many luxury in our mind. So we would like to use, like we would like to lead our life like the president or the prime minister or anything. So if we multiply this, these luxury things, uh, with the 7.9 billion people in the world, so what would be the uh, what would be the case for for the world? So it's it's I, I cannot think it's alarming. So we should think about uh, carbon footprint in terms of climate change, like compared to how fast nature can absorb our waste and generate new resources, and also impact on the environment of human activity in terms of pollution, damage to ecosystems, and depletion of natural resources. <clears throat> the carbon footprint, we all know, this is uh, like uh, the uh, process of system in theoretically an indicator of global warming potential. So carbon footprint can have can be for a person, a country, a cropping system, and a, 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 a product, a company, a university, and a for everything. So we should go for uh, every way. And even if we go for buying a more than uh, more one kg of nitrogen, so we should think that uh, we are we are. Uh, giving the environment more than 5 kg carbon dioxide equivalent emissions. So, so every way we can think and we can, we can help reduce as, as I know, I, as I work in the very uh, rural areas, they also know that we have to be very much, very much cautious about using resources. So uh, I am hopeful. So before going, uh, going more details, I should say about the how so whatever you think, uh, you, you may go to the moon or you may go to the, uh, uh, the other planet, but at the end of the day, you have to eat. 
and uh, this is the uh, system and our agricultural system and the, the plants or crops that helps us feed. So, and, and also help us, uh, can, can show us how we can uh, adjust with it. So, carbon enters ecosystem through photosynthesis of which a fraction is lost through autotropic respiration and we also harvest carbon through grain and the next, next gain is the next, uh, net ecosystem production. Uh, so, but uh, in, this, in this area, we can we, uh, come up with novel practices and I should and uh, with the, the novel practices, we employed the modification of conservation agricultural practices like uh, strip planting for upland crops and, and uh, non-parallel transplanting for the rice crops. Then we found in terms of economic return, in terms of uh, soil health improvement, in terms of yield, uh, so uh, we are not sacrificing. Though initially uh, we need some more input, but still it's very good. So I use carbon footprint for all the, all the crops in the cropping systems. Uh, so but I am not detailing that. So uh, I, I use very simple, uh, simple and focused LCA. I uh, use only field and preform emissions. So uh, other allocations we have, but I didn't. And I, I used cradle to gate, but though we have many uh, crop, uh, LCA system. So life cycle assessment approach is an approach uh, to quantify the carbon footprint of a production process and, and to find out the greatest mitigation option and the uh, areas. So I, I use this. So in, in an LCA, uh, uh, we have four steps, goal and scope definition, inventory analysis, impact assessment and interpretation. Uh, so with all this I uh, use, but, but before that I should say the fitting conservation agriculture system uh, in the rice based intensive crop system was a challenge. Like uh, in India we have many good things uh, like rice system intensification, direct seeding, but in our country uh, it is challenging because we have more uh, intensive cropping system. So that's why we developed non-parallel transplanting of rice uh, for fitting CA in rice-based cropping system. It's just very, very simple, like uh, uh, we, we will go develop a strip and overnight we soak the soil and in the next day or uh, day after we'll sow our rice seedlings. So uh, our objective was to assess the GHG emissions for conventional crop distribution practices and a strip planting or non-parallel transplanting with different levels of crop residue retention and to determine the hotspot contributing significantly to the GHG emissions and to identify the causes of the predominant GHG emissions. So we use the closed chamber method uh, in my PhD and also I worked similarly in BRI but uh, presently though I am working at BRC. So we use uh, a just simple focused LCA uh, from cradle, cradle to gate approach and for, for all the preform um, inputs, we, I developed emission factors for Bangladesh conditions and where I didn't find, I used the generic Bellu and, and find out the emission factors. So for your kind information, our production system is more uh, cleaner than other countries because we, we depend on mainly uh, the cleaner option like gas and other things. So the gas is much more cleaner than uh, fuels and other things. So I, and also I, I uh, use, uh, I de developed and, and measured the emissions from the on-farm systems, all the cases. And also I use the carbon sequestration and, uh, so that we can have a, a, a complete uh, LCA, uh, though simple and focused. So, uh, so I, in, for the goal was accomplished with the system boundary and uh, from cradle to gate and the functional unit was uh, one ton of rice. And uh, these are the four practices for we compare conventional uh, with the co conservation with high and low residue retention. So life cycle inventory is the main uh, step. So for all the inputs, I developed emission factors and find out the uh, and develop the life cycle inventory. The impact were assessed for 100 years, uh, 20, 50 and 500, uh, 20, 100 and 500 years time horizon. Uh, so uh, I will show later. So for the preform emission inventory, you can see that uh, in this way, I have developed all the things. And uh, to show the result, I, we can see that for the 100 year time horizon, uh, there is no significant effect, though, uh, uh, though no non-parallel transplanting with high residue retention have uh, lower emissions. But in case of carbon dioxide emissions, we found 
uh, that in 100 years time horizon the lowest uh, was found with non paddled and steep planting with high residue and low residue retention and higher with the conventional with high residue retention. In case of methane in, in the 100 years time horizon almost similar result and also nitrous oxide. And but if we integrate them all in the carbon footprint approach, we, we can found that uh, uh, we can found that uh, the emission is almost po uh, 0.95 to 1.35. Where in comparison with the China or India, or we found that in India it is almost uh, 2 to 3.5 ton carbon dioxide equivalent emission per ton rice production. In China, it is uh, almost more than 5, 5 to 7.5 ton carbon dioxide equivalent emission uh, per ton rice uh, uh, production. Uh, so maybe uh, there are many reasons like uh, the input use and also uh, our soil has lower uh, uh, carbon storage, maybe. Uh, so uh, in the, uh, and, and also we have natural alternate wetting and drying conditions in our country. So maybe all these are working uh, in this way. Uh, and if we go for further details, we found that is, yes, the methane is the hot spot, but uh, within the uh, 1.35 uh, ton carbon dioxide equivalent per uh, ton rice production. So uh, nothing uh, very much alarming, but still, uh, we, as you all know that we just, Bangladesh just contribute 0.35% of the global warming, uh, global emissions. But still as uh, we, we, as we would like to show us smarter, so we need to go for mitigation. And this would uh, help, uh, uh, like we have global methane place, we have COP26 uh, promise. So we can help uh, uh, even if uh, a little bit, but we can help uh, reducing the emissions from rice field or rice based intensive cropping systems. Uh, so uh, I compared this, but uh, as time short, so uh, Biri has also research showed that for one kg of rice, we have 66 uh, gram of carbon dioxide, 53 gram of methane and 0 0.5 gram of nitrous oxide from the field uh, emissions. But we can reduce it further. That's why I am here. The, uh, this is the intensive cropping system. I uh, for cropping system, we found for one ton of rice equivalent yield is, is it is also uh, like uh, uh, this. So I will show the complete one. So so this is the contribution of different crops on actual uh, cropping system life cycle ZZ emissions. I found the rice is higher, but. Uh, uh, not that much alarming in our country, and the, as there are also trade-off between methane and nitrous oxide emission in our in our rice field, and also we have many much, uh, many more uh, d d dynamics for carbon sequestration in our intensive cropping systems. Like we have uh, rice anchor crop, an rice anchor cropping system, and we ha we also have rice intensive cropping system. So for all this, I have studied carbon sequestration potential and also also measure carbon sequestration by uh, by subtracting the uh, 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 emission from heterotrophic respiration, methane, and also harvesting from the uh, by grain from the net primary production, and we develop uh, uh, the carbon sequestration value. And in our field, we found that with the steep planting with high residue retention. Uh, and uh, steep planting with low, and also co with the conventional uh, practice with high residue retention, we have this mass uh, organic carbon sequestration in soil after five years of uh, CA. Uh, so we found that uh, uh, this result, and we integrated it in the in the footprinting uh, calculation or estimation, and we found that yeah, conservation agricultural system sequesters carbon from the atmosphere into a soil organic matter pool. Uh, but what about Bangladesh? So we, we just in different cases, we uh, uh, just conducted many long-term experiments. And for, our, for my cases, we, we in two fields, we found this. And if we just, uh, if we, if we just minus the carbon sequestration from the total uh, footprint, we found that actual, the which is even lower. So this, uh, this, this way we can mitigate 
and also as we know uh, conservation agriculture system is a climate smart agricultural practices so uh, in in this way uh, we can promote these practices mm, uh, but i would not say in all the all the uh, cropping areas in country but in in uh, in the highland areas mainly or also in the medium highland areas because for after 5 years uh, we just cut the soil profile and we found that uh, to some extent the plow pan layer disappeared from under the conservation agricultural system and we also uh, studied the water footprint and we found that the groundwater reserves are much more higher uh, with the conservation agricultural systems as the poor continuity developed there so it was a very uh, good good si uh, sign for uh, rashai or hyban in the areas so uh, this this can be help uh, can help if we uh, if we is, uh, can uh, help farmer adopt the, these practices so very important and in case of uh, uh, nitrogen footprint i have published this in uh, high impact publications uh, before going to nitrogen footprint as uh, i have developed the nitrogen footprint for total bangladesh and i am now doing nitrogen footprint development for intensive cropping systems i should uh, s just show something uh, just from beyond my time limit so the the uh, history uh, short history of nitrogen how so growing food in the era of any ignorance it's showing but what about uh, uh, after the ignorance time uh, so uh, did daniel rutherford uh, said in 1772 that nitrogen exist but in 18, 1836 jane uh, baptized bosen gold said it is a, a nutrient in 1898, William Crookes says there is not enough of it, but uh, it is the, the Heber who, in 1908, who said, I can make it. And then Carl Boss and Heber both said, I can make a lot of it for crop production. So, uh, so then it, it begins like uh, the nitrogen uh, production, but as we uh, are using uh, b uh, from the beginning maybe we are not that much co cautious about using and uh, and is efficiency though uh, very low maybe that's why we are we are ha hampering our environmental system so so uh, we can see that uh, the global rates of uh, reactive nitrogen creation by humans in contrast to nature so it is uh, alarming so we should uh, we, we already crossed the natural range so which nature can sustain and and uh, and we we can see acid rain biodiversity loss coastal hypoxia smoke rain and climate change uh, stratospheric ozone loss forest loss and in cascade so we can see in all over the world so every even uh, we, in our research we found that if uh, if nitrogen is increased in the in the in the cascade all over the world even in soil the the um, uh, you know uh, soil binding agent get loose so so uh, soil uh, erosion and we will we'll increase and also uh, our other systems will develop so uh, many many uh, uh, bad outcomes are coming in the following years so we should we should uh, be it is it is a like uh, all party uh, responsibilities so i uh, we should do, do that but before that we should develop uh, our footprint because it is very important then we can go for practices so our footprint is higher than austria or our netherlands but uh, we, we don't have that much uh, an end footprint but in cropping system we should develop uh, the uh, estimate the footprint so i am doing that as we use uh, excessive nitrogen uh, in an imbalance way with other nutrients so uh, uh, with this uh, as we have good practices and and increasing uh, nitrogen accumulation in soil too so I, I hope we will have a good nitrogen footprint from our systems with the good practices you know i i am the i, I am running the uh, fertilizer subcommittee in country so we have very numerous promising some or um, uh, um, uh, some fertilizer like uh, organic and also uh, uh, microbial fertilizer those have more than 70 to 80 percent recovery rate of nitrogen so we can use uh, use those uh, uh, with other good practices uh, for our coping system so with this i should say that uh, we should uh, careful about our footprints and also we, uh, 
the conservation agricultural systems or other good practices should be used all together uh, to reduce our uh, personal or even our cropping system footprint so that uh, uh, we can show the world we are smarter than other other countries so uh, so uh, this is all all shared a, a responsibility to reduce our um, footprints so that's all for from me uh, thank you very much for your uh, thank you dr kharalam we can have maybe one or two question in case somebody has Uh, thank you, thank you sir. Uh, Dr. Karala. Thank you very much. Uh, we move on to the next speaker, that is Climate Resilient Economic Practices in Bangladesh. Dr. Sen would be presenting, right? So, Dr. Sen uh, is going to present uh, this next one, Climate Resilient Economic Practices in Bangladesh. He is also co-author on this paper, yeah? Yeah, he is a co-author. Honorable Chairman, respected scientist, again welcome to all. So, uh, now I am presenting climate resilient agronomic practice in unfavorable ecosystem of Bangladesh. You know that uh, we have some unfavorable ecosystems in our country which crop production is difficult. Uh, these are like saline areas, haurs, uh, drought prone soil and others. So, this is the uh, our 80 percent land is flood plain. 8% are terrace soil and 12% are hilly soil in our country and our climate is characterized by high rainfall, high temperature, heavy rainfall and often excessive moisture with seasonal variation. And we have three seasons, uh, Robi, Kharif 1 and Kharif 2. So uh, the influence of climate change in agriculture, we have some hazards like floods, flash floods, cyclones, droughts. Tidal surges, water logging, water and soil erosion. Uh, we have some, some natural hazards. So again, the floods it's happened mainly July to August. Flash flood it is happen in May. Drought uh, it's happen in April May. Erosion it is uh, 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 happen in uh, August. Cyclone and tornado, two seasons, one is May and another is October to November and cold waves in January. This is the uh, time for the, the this natural ha ha hazards are happened. And this is the special distribution of rainfall and the eastern side more rainfall happened and the northwest in Barin region, the rainfall uh, quantity is low. The deep color is the heavy rainfall. Chittagong, Silet and other Mamanshings and the Rashrahi less rainfall. And this is the special distribution of temperature. Here the more temperature, the deep colors, the south uh, northwestern region and in the uh, north side at the less temperature, both the maximum temperature and both the minimum temperature. And what is the climate change impact in agriculture? We found that summer are becoming more hotter and monsoon is ira irregular with untimely rainfall and increased river flow with inundation during monsoon, heavy rainfall with a short period we found and crop damage due to flash flood and it also uh, happened in the uh, north, uh, north side uh, like northeast Silhet region, very retained rainfall in the dry period and prolonged cold spell. I found and salinity intrusion along the coastal region that is climate extremes are happening in our country like India and others. And the problem associated with climate change if uh, temperature increases then our uh, cold loving crop like wheat and uh, potato yield will be yield, it already decrease. Uh, if uh, temperature rise in the winter then I see that the cold like uh, wheat potato that increase the deal and what is the first one is the is salinity what is the impact of salinity our soil salinity is increasing day by day this is the map of uh, 2001 and this is the map of 2009 that the red portions these are the uh, coastal belts and you found that salinity is increasing and the problem due to salinity is the already 27 percent area more are affected by salinity 
salinity uh, hamper the crop growth at the seedling stage more and salinity raise due to capillary movement of the groundwater which is harmful to crop and after a, a germination of the crop if salinity is more than the crop dies if due to uh, if, uh, due to exosmosis process and impact of salinity crop soil about 10% uh, yield will be decrease in some other crops it is more so and another uh, thing is uh, with saline water and our saline uh, sea level rise level is also rising that is another problem due to uh, warming of the uh, temperature and it is two kinds of watering one is the volumetric expansion of the sea water is expanding and also the uh, uh, snowfall melting in the himalayas comes to the bay of bengal and the uh, level water level is rising and what is the adaptation strategy to cope with salinity we have uh, many adaptation strategy the one is uh, rainwater harvesting saline free rainwater harvesting you found this pond mini pond and this polythene the rainwater is harvesting well it is a saline free and we can uh, give supplemental irrigation and judicious use of water in home state the pitcher is full of water and drop of water like saline comes to the uh, plant root and soil tolerant some varieties we have like mung bean like barley some salt tolerant variety and in uh, another crop practice is sorghum cropping practice we found in the coastal area the uh, crops are grown in the uh, this furrow and the lowlands there are fish cultured so uh, through this the we can escape the salinity and adapt another adaptation strategy is relaying master to obtain sufficient growth before salinity relay crop we can grow in the saline area and saline resistant also some rice varieties cowpea varieties and we can also some cover crop like uh, Uh, sweet gourd it covers the soil and uh, restricts the capillary rise of the uh, uh, saline water to the up, upper surface and also some uh, saline tolerant varieties i am showing here and he has found the relaying sweet gourd with tiamon and you found that uh, sweet gourd here the relay crop and the two crops are promising we found that one is watermelon in the dakop and other extremely soil area we found that watermelon is uh, resist, uh, resistant to some extent in salinity and also sweet gourd and impact of drought this is another problem in the uh, northwest part of the country barin region where rainfall is very low compared to other region and uh, evapotranspiration is also high so this is the two kinds of uh, drought one is uh, drought of kharif drought and another is rabi drought rabi drought happened in the uh, month of march april and kharif drought it is in the october september october also uh, there is a drought the red uh, red color portions are the drought prone area and impact of drought uh, 18% crops are damaged in winter and 9% of summer crops are uh, highly vulnerable to annual drought food crops problems uh, and what is the uh, adaptation strategy that i am uh, seeing the rice field uh, the drought prone soils the barley field this is the impact of drought and maize field shortage of water and this is the yield loss of different crop tiamon uh, broadcut out wheat mustard and potato how many percent yield are uh, reduced from the uh, drought and uh, female, female workers are uh, giving supplemental irrigation in the pitcher in sweet goat field the adaptation strategy and again we have to uh, construct a mini pond for supplemental irrigation and dry seedbed practice instead of wet seedbed practice it, it minimizes the water requirement for irrigation and cultivation of drought uh, prone crop like chickpea very little amount quantity of water is required for chickpea or uh, lentil and minimum tillage and mulching minimum tillage and mulching also common practice to reduce the uh, drought and adaptation strategies also if we practice awd water uh, uh, alternate wet and drying system for rice it reduces the 40% requirement of irrigation water and if we use the straw mulch 
it restricts the capillary rise of the uh, water as ev trans evaporation will be reduced and uh, the mulching is a good for uh, uh, in drought prone area and we also establish some uh, drought prone crop like pulses and deep rooted crop like chickpea is grown well in drought prone area you found and that another third hazard is impact of flood you see the red lines there are rivers in the flood prone areas this is the submersions of crop field and inundated homestead and river bank erosion due to flooding and adaptation strategy should be we can cultivate some deep water rice our in country the traditional some deep water rice the crop length may be 15 feet or 20 feet if flood water uh, increase and the plant height is also increased but yield is uh, yield is low compared to the sh uh, short length variety short uh, short height varieties it is our traditional uh, variety deep water rice and we can cultivate water loving crop like wild taro kochu and some water tolerant other crop varieties we are also searching and floating agriculture we can uh, uh, successfully go in the in the flood prone areas this is the gopalganj and pirospur to floating agriculture and Pyramid and raised cropping uh, in the submerged area of some uh, places of Cholonville, we found the pyramid area, the low, uh, this, the, uh, the, the pyramid, the peat crop like the country bean and others crop are raised and the low there are water bodies. So and also risk cropping we can, uh, we can practice in the flood prone area and also impact of cyclone cyclone if it is damaged banana field damaged rice field uprooted the papaya field and what is the startup strategy that is if we uh, if we grow the wind breaking tree like coconut dead plum then uh, we cyclone and wind are stopped and embark construction embankment and protection from the inundation these are the adaptive measures and technology in Bangladesh against climate stage, some technology, if we shifting the planting time, we can adjust the planting time, then we can escape uh, drought or salinity in some extent. In this figure, it is 29 January sowing, the crop is here, but if we sow it uh, one month uh, earlier, 11 December sowing, you found the uh, Mogbin picture, it's very nice, but if we delay sowing then uh, salinity due to salinity the yield is increased so shifting of planting time is one of the way to adjust the uh, climatic stress like salinity and drought and mulching mulching is also another way to address salinity and mulching uh, salinity and drought and relay cropping is also another agronomic practice for adjusting uh, salinity and drought prone area and some we develop some varieties against climatic stress for salinity we have some uh, rice varieties uh, developed by Bangladesh Rice Research Institute and Bina potato developed by Bari some salt tolerant variety sweet potato also from Bari mustard uh, also from Bari wheat also from Bari and now BWMRI and also uh, sesame from oil seed research center of Bari and heat tolerant we have some varieties just uh, rice from Bari, Bridhan 42, 43 and heat tolerant uh, BAW 11, 11, 41 and so on. So some heat if uh, tolerant variety also flood from rice, say it's submerged and tolerant variety Bridhan 5 and 9 sustain 10 days under water. Some Bridhan varieties sustain 12 to 14 days under water and uh, breathe on 44 tolerant 50 centimeter high tidal water and maize also bari maize 11 tolerant water logging condition and drought we have some varieties from biri some rice varieties drought after media uh, up to medium drought and wheat also some uh, resistant variety potato also some uh, resistant variety chickpea also from uh, some resistant variety barley some resistant variety mugbin also and some cold waves come somewhere and from uh, in the Howard area it is affected cold wave so we developed one variety 
to tolerate cold spell during the winter seedling stage of winter season. And this is all about my presentation. Uh, thanks for your patient hearing. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sen. You can have one or two. I, I have one. Yeah, please. Uh, thank you. I, I am from Bina. Okay. I am nuclear I am director of administration and support service. Previously, I was in the plan building division. Uh, I have one correction. Uh, you mentioned Bina uh, 5 and 9 as submergent tolerant, but uh, actually they are not submergent tolerant. Submergent tolerant variety is Bina 11 and 12. Okay. Bina okay. 5 and 9 is not submergent tolerant. Okay, yes. I will incorporate it. Okay, yes, please, Thank please you. correct. And another thing, we, we must be very cautious for using our saline area because you know the burning issue like the oil seed, oil seed production. Uh, yes. last, last week, our Honorable Minister for Agriculture visited the uh, Subarnachar area, yes. uh, the Noakhali area, and uh, he directed to grow more oil seed crops. Uh, and in this case, uh, we must be careful to design any practice for uh, maybe agronomic practice or maybe other practices, uh, what we call it. So, uh, what we have see over there, seen over there is that farmers are growing uh, Tiamon rice and it is a uh, late duration, uh, long duration. Yes. And then they grow for, go for soybean and uh, those farmers who are growing the short duration varieties of rice, almond, almond rice, they even grow, they told that they even grow five crops in a field in the same year. Yes. So, so I think, uh, uh, I think we should have some study, more study uh, in, involving by including the short duration varieties we have developed from Biri or Bina. We have many varieties of uh, yes. short duration Tiamon varieties. For example, Binadan Sivan is a, uh, who is uh, eradicated manga from the Rangpur area. That you, you can uh, consider that. We have now Binadan 17, we have now uh, Binadan 11 even, Binadan 12 even, uh, and we have Binadan 20, and we have many, many short duration varieties. You first grow the, 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 the short duration almond and then go for mustard. Yes. Or you go for soybean, or you go for groundnut, or you some, or you grow some uh, some 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 vegetables or something like that, and then you go for uh, even sesame. Yes, even, yes, even yes. sesame. So this is the burning issue because because we are not getting uh, the, the market for oil uh, edible oil is very very fluctuating, and uh, we should address these things. And we have learned actually in the in the saline area and uh, in the, in the uh, southwestern part of Bangladesh or southeastern part of Bangladesh. The only area which we can explore for oil seed growing, uh, then we, we must address it. Otherwise, <laughs> uh, otherwise it will be very much frustrating for us. Uh, we will not have uh, edible oil and some, some more thing will be come out uh, in, in the future. So, thank you. Your uh, presentation was very nice and uh, uh, thanks for your nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, sir. I assure you that Bari will uh, already uh, developing some short duration, uh, short durated oil seed crops variety, and we are uh, solving the onion problem in Bangladesh. You know that five lakh ton more onion are produced in uh, in the country, and uh, I think that Bari and Bina and others institute that we were capable to uh, pro, uh, solve the problem of the oil, seed, oil, oil crop, high price of oil crop in our country. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other? If no, then. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sen, for an excellent presentation. So, we move on to the uh, next speaker. Uh, the next speaker is Shamim Hassan Bhuya. I don't think he's here. Okay, then uh, we have uh, the next speaker is Mahesh. Kathala. I don't uh, see him also. Okay, so <clears throat> the next one is uh, Dipali Rani Das and Shaful Islam Faruqi. Nobody here? Hmm? Oh. 
Okay, then uh, <coughs> the next one is uh, Grinson George, Fisheries and Aquaculture, also not present. So uh, that is the, <coughs> we had two presentations in this session, one by Dr. Khara Alam and Dr. Sen. So we have finished the whole time, but we still have a few minutes for discussion. So any general comments on the session? We can take the first and the second session together. So any observations, any comments? So it's open now. Uh, President, um, uh, uh, I'm curious to know what is the uh, uh, average precipitation during the, you know, in the drought area, the one yeah. presented. So, Dr. Sen? anybody has? Uh, Dr. Sen? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Sen? Ranjit, uh, there's a question regarding the, uh, you said, uh, yeah, please, go ahead. <laughs> Just to use the uh, time uh, we have, I'm curious to know the average precipitations uh, in the drought area, the one you mentioned in the western part. So, uh, in average, uh, Bangladesh, um, 220 centimeter uh, annual rainfall, but in the Rashahi region, it is 150 centimeter. Average 222, even we have 250 centimeter rainfall in the uh, northeast, like Silhet region, but in Rashahi it is only 140 to 50 centimeter rainfall. And the, uh, you know, the evaporation rate is more higher than the uh, precipitation rate. And that is why the drought occurs. Thank you. Okay. You can explain in the millimeter, that is better to understand. In Bangladesh, the highest precipitation is more than 6,000 in the northeastern part of Silet. Silet. And lowest less than 1,000 in Lalpur. Lalpur, yes. Lalpur. 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 This is one. And my uh, not question, just a query. The evaporation, the, and then evapotranspiration. Evapotranspiration, yes. Then you have to maintain the climate stage and surplus estimation annually, hydrological calendar, you follow the hydrological calendar, mm -hmm. and then when the stress condition, the demand from the ground yes, yes. Uh, resources for marine track, it is problem. When the how, how much in the queue, queue this yes. is discharge, yes. and if it is uh, more than that, then it declines the water. The table is uh, yes. Lowering, yes. And uh, this is the, our uh, north western part problem and uh, my suggestion is because my adaptation plan I have already recommend to your uh, agriculture university VC to salt tolerance plan yes. the paddy length of the duration and the other part of the Shunam goes the Howard Bill area this is all already already one month less Three uh, ninety days or something else, because Cherapunji, Cherapunji is the north northern part. Yes. If we we can know, can I have a set three four sensors to <laughs> when the water comes to downstream? Yes. We do not know. No, or you just okay. We have the time, so we have fifteen minutes time to discuss. So I think Eronjit can discuss two these papers. Uh, what one is one three. is he of his personal and another is he present up on behalf of uh, Akasari. Which, which one? So we can discuss uh, these two paper. E even we can discuss uh, oh. six and seven uh, session papers. Uh, we are missing our two professors from BSM Rao. They are very renowned agronomist. <laughs> Sir, you sti just come? Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, they can also supplement that uh, our agriculture minister, who is also an agriculturist, he is very much conscious about the manage the unfavorable ecosystem. You know that 
uh, our uh, only price uh, about 70 percent or 75 percent land is favorable ecosystem there is crop production is very high but some unfavorable ecosystem like saline area like drought area flood prone area we have some constraint and uh, we are uh, both our breeder they are searching tolerant or resistant variety uh, for the drought prone area saline, uh, saline area and also uh, tolerate some water logged and also our agronomists they are also uh, trying to uh, find some agronomic uh, manipulation or agronomic technique to uh, develop some uh, sali against salinity, against drought and against flood. And you know this year which uh, our one site is telling that one liter uh, soybean oil it is exceeding 200 taka. So our minister also uh, telling us to uh, boost up the uh, area and production of uh, oil seed crop and for southern region is the only uh, region where we can expand the horizontal expansion of soybean and other oil seed crops. The southern area, you know, most area are monocropped, only the uh, uh, Khorib 2, there are uh, Tiamon rice are ca cultivated. So uh, our Bina scientist telling if uh, short duration Tiamon variety then followed by soybean or uh, other oil seed crop, even uh, we can uh, grow mustard. Though some erosic acid, are, we have also on uh, like uh, banola, canola that is uh, one kind of oil seed that uh, less erosic acid and also banola, Bangladeshi. Uh, so from uh, this practice we can hor both horizontal expansion and the vertical expansion per acre yield increasing the oil seed crop demand we can minimize and uh, you know that onion crisis three years ago when India banned uh, one kilo onion it is 300 uh, uh, taka too high but when government provide us a project and we uh, in uh, last five years onion both the acre is uh, and yield, per acre yield and the total production all are increased and this year our total demand is uh, 32 or 34 uh, lakh metric ton. We are producing 26 lakh metric ton and I think that within five years we are will self-sufficient in the uh, onion. So if uh, the oil, uh, soybean oil is more than 200 kilo, Taka, then I think the farmer, if get benefit, they will produce more soybean, more mustard, more sesam, and I think our uh, SARS they can uh, tell about the problem. Thank you very much. Actually, uh, there are hot spots, some hot spots already identified. Those are already you mentioned. Uh, one is drought prone hot spot, that is Barin tract. The other one is uh, Howard, uh, another hot spot. The uh, third one is the uh, saline, coastal saline area. Then uh, the hill, uh, uh, hill area. And then waterlogged area. I started there was a presentation that uh, the waterlogging is becoming more problematic than even uh, salinity. Okay. So these are the hot spots that already we have identified and now research thrust are put mainly on this kind of uh, um, uh, hot spots addressing the, the problem. As you already mentioned that uh, rainfall in the northern and uh, northwestern part, that is Barin tract, rainfall uh, much lower than the national average, it is true. But the problem is even low, the rainfall is very, very concentrated only in the summer. Problem is that. But fortunately, this rainfall, when it is stored in the soil, that is stored rainfall, that support even winter crops until February or even early March. And then for one month, one month is very, very critical for winter crops. That is the, and that is at the terminal stage of growth, that is a reproductive stage of growth. 
So that is that we have to address that one month. And then the Kharib one, that is from uh, say uh, March to June, or like this. this and at that time, uh, um, Sisame, Mungbin, Ausreis, uh, these three or four crops, not that much crop. Of course, nowadays, uh, maize is also um, uh, growing everywhere. Uh, so that Kharib one and that uh, last part of the uh, Robi crops, that is very clear, that we have to address properly. So, but the farmers are very smart in Bangladesh, I tell you. They are, I think, well advanced the scientists. So what they do, they are doing the uh, relay cropping. Relay cropping means before harvesting one crop, they grow another crop. For example, before harvesting almond rice, that is Corib 2, there is still moisture in the soil. So they just uh, throw the seeds of grass pea, or even, uh, he's the mungbin expert, he developed some varieties also. <laughs> so, mungbin even. So, this way they are maintaining. That is the problem of the uh, Northwestern, and definitely the Bina or Bri, uh, even Bongabundu developed Biyudhan 1. These are the short duration almond rice. And they, uh, the, the, this, uh, this short duration almond rice you can harvest even in October. Then you have plenty of time for the winter crops, and you can use the stored soil moisture. So short duration almond rice played, is playing very, very important role in, in, in uh, increasing the cropping intensity. And in the south, as you said, the problem is just different. In the south, uh, salinity is a problem, water logging is a problem, because the south, in the south, uh, in Bhula, Potuakali, even Shatkira, the soil is rather clay type. And this uh, uh, soil doesn't uh, uh, become appropriate for sowing of winter crops till end of December. So, <laughs> in the in the south, the winter is very short. You know, the winter comes in November and it finishes at the end of January. Uh, so, the winter is very short. So, the soil doesn't become dew. We call dew condition. I mean, that is appropriate for sowing until end of December. So then, very difficult to establish uh, b b mustard or other uh, lentil or winter pulse, this kind of crop, because the soil is rather uh, wet till that time. So what, even you develop short duration variety, but that will work in some places, especially in the highland, but that will not work in all the places, especially in the medium lowland or lowland, because the soil remain uh, uh, wet saturated. So in those why farmers grow soybean or why they grow uh, cowpea, cowpea or nowadays even sunflower, these are crop, this, 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 this crop are growing there. Because this crop, yeah. even you grow end of December, even early January, you can harvest quite good, good year. Because this crop rather coal or uh, they have resilience in uh, tolerating temperature and water, moisture water also. So nowadays, the, uh, the, the agricultural scientists, especially Bri, Bari, or Bongabundi, even we have some project in the, in Shubornachor, in the south. We are trying to address the cropping system, short duration almond rice, as he already mentioned there. Then soybean, we have very good varieties of it. And our varieties nowadays, this is, I think, in South Asia, this is the highest. Sometimes the yield is more than 3.5 ton, but uh, that we could not imagine even five years ago. More than 3.5 uh, tons. And the duration is, uh, say, 90 days or 95 days. So, so almond rice, soybean, then you can go for, if it is highland, then go on short duration, um, house rice, and then almond rice. Almond rice is very much prominent crop in the south. Because at that time, salinity almost, there is nil salinity because of rain. This is the thing. And for the another hot spot is water logging. It is becoming a problem. So there is technology, you know, vertical, vertical agriculture. That means you grow in the top, for example, say uh, some cucumbers, lao, kumra, this kind of thing, gopatol gourd. And then in the down, you can grow uh, some vegetables. Now this kind of multi, multi-stored vegetable cultivation and flooding. 
And also short jan is very, very important. Yesterday I tried to show the short jan that they make raised bed and on the bed they grow the crops and uh, on the uh, farrow they, they cultivate uh, uh, fish. Short jan. Short yes, I know, you know, short jan. So technologies are uh, 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 available. Uh, so I, I, I think we are very much in trouble with our area. I tell you, problem is sudden flash flood. The, uh, uh, and there is not uh, the new problem. This problem, age old problem. How it means it's like basin, plate. Like plate. So the, uh, the, the periphery or uh, uh, periphery dry, uh, become dry, dries earlier, even say from October or November. Then the farmers can grow in the periphery. Then the water recedes, and the farmers go for transplanting. And in, in, the, in the middle, I think the uh, bottom part of the basin, the water dries, say, uh, at the end of November, even early December. And there the farmers grow the local rice. The problem is fine. If sudden rain, flash flood, it is usually in Boishak Mas. I mean, when the harvesting time, April, first April or middle April, then that become disaster. So uh, I tell you, you can develop technology for flood. We have even uh, flood water, uh, flood, uh, flooded rice. Even we can improve that. But problem is flash flood. To address flash flood is, is very, very... Water uh, Resource Ministry people are coming in the afternoon. <laughs> and nowadays, the, the environmentalist, I tell you another yeah, information. That, the, nah, the nah, 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 just yeah. one information. No, nah, no, nah, continue. We can continue up to half okay. an hour. Yeah. The environmentalists, sir, they say, no, you can't make any dam. This is not environmentally friendly. So what to do? You have to adapt with that environment. Flash flood, okay, one year it will damage your crops. You go for uh, uh, fish. <laughs> you go for fish. Don't make any dam. That will, uh, that will hamper the nature. That will hamper the environment. You have to adapt with the situation. You have to accept the situation. So this is uh, 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 the, the scientists, they say, okay, or even the government say, okay, we make dam so that we can control the flash flood. But environmentalists say, no, you can't make that thing is that in the Howard areas, our rivers are already, uh, their siltation, their water bearing capacity is lowering every year. So if some portions of money we are expand to uh, dig, uh, dredging the rivers of the Howard areas, it will uh, carry more water. So uh, the, uh, then we can more water, the river can carry and the embankment, more low pressure will in the embankment will be. Sir, another thing, the uh, uniqueness of the shortness variety in the earlier, in the Rangpur and Kurigram, there is Monga, which historically Monga every uh, Kartik Mash in Bengali, and uh, the no job, farmer have no money, but Tiamon will uh, harvest it at the month of December, so, October and November, they are uh, jobless, they have no purchasing capacity to buy food. That is, uh, in Bangladesh, that is a telling manga. But our scientists develop, uh, and, and that region, no industry. Our North and Rangpur and Kurigram, so they are suffering uh, for to purchase food. But our scientists develop some short duration varieties. They are harvesting in the month of September, October. So, Every month, farmers are harvesting uh, paddy and others, so no job shortage and no food uh, purchasing capacity is problem in that area. The manga problem is solved in Bangladesh, I think it's uh, forever. Thank you. He yeah. developed four crops. Okay, okay. He is expert of manga removing <laughs> yeah. something. Yes, sir. It's a good and, job. Good and, job. I, I think he can supplement better than okay, me. Okay, sir. Thank, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's, our, it's my opportunity to say something about uh, manga mitigation. 
as, uh, as he mentioned that they, during the month of uh, October, uh, that there is crisis of both works and food. Yes. So uh, because the uh, uh, crop, uh, almond rice was harvested during the November and December time, and we need to uh, put in October. To address that, uh, um, it, uh, to, uh, to obtain the food in October, we developed uh, our Bangladesh Grace University, uh, Bina, and uh, then uh, Biri. Uh, we developed uh, some short duration varieties of almond rice that can harvest it in, in the month of October, and we secured the food, and also it is the opportunity to uh, work the laborers. So uh, Bangladesh is already, it is the, uh, not now in, in, in our country. Mm. Because of this short duration characteristics of uh, almond rice, and we also developed Mugwin varieties. Already, already uh, my friend already mentioned that uh, we have developed six Mugwin varieties, and uh, uh, most of them are short duration, and easily uh, we can fit uh, uh, in four crop sequence. Uh, almond rice, then potato or mustard, then Mugwin, then uh, tea house rice. We already developed with the funding of uh, Kishigosa Foundation, and we uh, we, uh, we, uh, thus we uh, upscaling with the help of uh, Rongpur Dinaspur RDRS, uh, Rural Service and NGO. With the support of that NGO, we, we just uh, focusing to mitigate the uh, manga areas, to remove manga. And uh, uh, another uh, uh, issue is that the uh, uh, salinity, salinity area, we, we discussing the, uh, the uh, elaboration of crops in that area. We have the uh, uh, soybean varieties, uh, our university developed, Dr. Korim, that, that is well adaptive to saline, saline varietal, that is high, high yielding. We are also working saline tolerant wheat uh, uh, variety to develop. Uh, we, uh, uh, we did it in our university in, as a basic research that some of the uh, wheat genotypes are tolerant more than 12 DS per centimeter. So it's, we, uh, we are just giving trial, on farm trial in coast, coastal areas of Bangladesh like Fort Wakali, Borgona, uh, Shatkira, Khulna. Uh, just to, we also get, uh, got the fund from the Kishibal Foundation. We are trying to get, uh, get uh, find out the genotypes which, which are trodden to Salon Belt. And we hope that we will get the wheat variety in Salon Belt. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we are expecting to uh, uh, to address the saline and increase the yield of wheat in saline belt area. We have also, the, uh, uh, for addressing the drought, we have also uh, deep rooted uh, chickpea variety we developed from our university. And uh, in Barind area, the, our uh, chickpea variety is uh, uh, much uh, popular in uh, drought condition. Considering the flood, uh, uh, because uh, there are uh, there is a chor area and uh, the uh, at that uh, at that area the uh, uh, the farmers have to transplant the TMO on time in very 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 uh, extreme late late condition because of receding late receding of uh, flood, uh, flood water uh, to uh, uh, address that situation farmers have no no option to uh, use uh, high yielding varieties at uh, 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 late transplanting condition. The transplanting condition is in the late of September, even in first week of October. That is not the time of uh, cultivating uh, modern almond rice varieties. This, for this reason, they cultivate the local 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 variety, and this that local variety yield is very low. We are also trying to uh, improve that local variety by crossing. That local variety, the ganja, is popular variety that uh, in late condition uh, planted, October, first week of October time is planting time. Uh, we already hybridized with our modern varieties. We are getting some progenies. Or, uh, uh, we are expecting that we will get uh, the high yielding uh, modern varieties of rice for late transplanting condition, even in, in the month, month of October. We are just uh, trying to, uh, in several ways, uh, uh, apart from the agronomic management, we are trying to develop some you know, varieties that are tolerant in different uh, 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 adverse environmental condition to adapt changing environmental condition and to secure food security in Bangladesh. Thank you very much. Another question, uh, if uh, our uh, bureaucrat and the politicians 
sometimes they do not understand. If they are telling the short duration, then yield must be reduced. If a variety of 150 days of rice, it gives 6 ton, then 100 uh, days variety, it will must be reduced. They are telling, one uh, breeder tell me that they are telling the Kalo Guru, Lal Basur, Dud Beshi Hutohobe. Aerofum variety, Amade Burokrata Chai. They are contradictory characters in the same uh, variety. If it is short durated, yield must be reduced. And uh, because yield is a relationship with the crop duration, because the photosynthesis, more photosynthesis, more day length, the yield will be higher. So we have to sacrifice something also. So, uh, but uh, for a depend on a single crop, rice, we have to uh, overcome the situation, in the, especially in the southern region. They are depend on the subtlety that uh, Tiamon is saline free environment, they grow it very well. But this year we found uh, watermelon in Dakop, strong, uh, highly saline area. Huge amount of uh, quantity of uh, watermelon are found in the Dakop, Dumuria, etc. And their farmers are benefited. So we have to search the saline resistant crop, also saline resistant variety, which variety, also some agronomic manipulation like shifting planting time, adjusting planting time, etc. Uh, I actually. Uh, uh, that was Mr. Shane was telling that the uh, if the crop is uh, short duration, yield must be reduced. It is not always true. If you go for the you, you see the Binadan 70, it measures in only 110 days, but it gives even seven tons per hectare of yields in the TMM season. So it is not always true that if the duration is uh, shorter. It must be shorter, but it must be reduced. It is not always true. If we can break the linkage between the these two characters, then it is possible. And uh, if you see our Binadan 7, if you see our Binadan uh, 17, if you see our Binadan 16, and uh, if you see our Binadan 20, even 20, it's a uh, zinc and iron rich variety. It even gives uh, 5 tons or 6 tons per hectare in the oven season within 100 days or 120 days. So it is not a, not a, uh, not a uh, very little, it is a very handsome yield, I think. And another point is, uh, was discussing, I think this discussion is very lively, I think. Uh, uh, our professor was telling that uh, the flash flood is a problem. I think flash flood is not a problem now. Because the Bina has two varieties of uh, I mean, uh, submergence tolerant variety. These two varieties, Bilan 11 and 12, it can even tolerate 21 days or 25 days of submergence. And even sometimes they can, they can be grown under double uh, flooding condition. One flood go and then came another flood, they can be grown. And in this uh, very, 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 I think very acceptable. Uh, yield we can get from Binadan 11, uh, it can uh, give uh, even, uh, even 5 tons per hectare under flat condition, flat condition. So I think the problem is our how, how is our uh, problem and we could not, and the deep water, these two and uh, another thing is coming from uh, our Manu, Manu sir, uh, he was telling about the tall land, uh, tall land we have some technologies already, but for our area, we have technologies, but the, the, if the flood comes earlier, then it is a problem. Then what we need? We need a short duration variety. And also it must be cold tolerant. Yeah. Cold tolerant. If, if, if it is not cold tolerant, then we will not have any harvest from that variety if a flood can come. So, uh, so I think the, 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 uh, the problems to be addressed is how area. And another is deep water, like uh, in the southern belt, in the in the Furitpur area, you can see, and even in the Sirajganj area, uh, the, the depth of water even even three meter or four meter, four meter. We have technologies, our indigenous technologies. We have varieties like Lokhidiga. We it can even grow ten feet or twelve feet. 
uh, at the, it, it is growing with the increasing water, gradual increase of water, it is, it is growing. So, so Bina already has taken program and Bina have some mutant varieties that can even give yield four times per hectare under, under that condition. We have some, uh, some mutants I have developed from Lokshidiga, irradiating the seeds of Lokshidiga from, from the Gopalganj area, we have taken and, and we have some other varieties like Hizoldiga and many, many varieties we have uh, for, for, the, for, for the deep water. But we need now to, to, to develop its yield or increase its yields. If we can increase the yield, then a big area uh, will be under two or three crops uh, in the future. And I think uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, release some varieties for deep water. And uh, another thing is that, uh, that uh, for the saline area, uh, we have many technologies. For, for rice, we have two varieties, another eight and ten. The ten is most out, outstanding variety now in Bangladesh. Then it can grow under 10, 12 and 14 years per meter. Meter in the reproductive space, it can tolerate. 14 years per meter. The Binadhan 10. Borrow, in the borrow. Uh, almond season is, uh, 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 salinity is not a problem. But in the borrow season, salinity is a big problem. And we have the technologies. And, uh, and uh, the, the, this year, we have some field days. And, uh, and if you go to the saline area, you will find in the borrow season that the most of the area uh, are, are under Binadhan 10. So uh, I think Binadhan 10, Binadhan 8, and we have groundnut varieties. We have five groundnut varieties that can that, that, that are salinity tolerant. It can even tolerate 8 days per meter salinity. So I think for addressing the saline area, we have many technologies. And we have uh, wheat varieties also. Uh, Professor Mohanil uh, Unik, uh, sorry, uh, I could not um, remember the name exactly. So uh, he, he was telling that they have life, but Bina already, already released a Wheat variety, Bina Gom 1, in 2016, it can even tolerate 12 days per meter salinity. So I think uh, to address uh, the, the problematic areas, we have technology. But thing is that we'll carry this in that area. There is some laps and jumps between the research and uh, maybe with the extension or maybe with the BIDC people. Uh, they are not. Uh, producing or multiplying the seeds uh, uh, that, that, that are required by the farmers. That may be the, uh, the uh, issue of discussion now. But we have technologies other than our areas uh, and the deep water. Uh, we, we have many technologies. We have developed. Uh, we will discuss but in the deep next deep session deep. about how our, how our uh, problem, etc. Uh, the, 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 these two but areas are... We want, we to, we we want to discuss or concentrate five minutes more on uh, that, uh, the paper Sir, okay. what uh, Ranjit Shan presented on waste management. Waste management in Bangladesh, but we are very much concerned about the waste management of Dhaka city. Uh, if audience can participate and comment on that. <coughs> okay, I see. Waste is not waste, it's resource, if you can manage. That is, the, I think that is the thing. Waste, um, we know how to convert the waste into usable, uh, especially compost, or maybe nowadays, you know, in Dhaka city. I think in every house, every flat, uh, uh, there is the home garden, and they they use uh, biofertilizer or compost. So there is huge demand created for this kind of uh, resource. I said waste is not waste, but how to convert the waste into resource, and uh, that also we know. But I don't know why it doesn't working well. Otherwise, waste uh, should not be waste. In the all over the world, I think West is converting into usable <laughs> wealth. Yes, 
Waste is one form of wealth. Dr. Joya uh, mentioned uh, that Hadar, uh, that waste is contributing to our economy. That's, yes, yeah. yes, yes, sir. In uh, there is one uh, study that uh, maybe seven thousand uh, industries, seven thousand industries. So far, I remember. Remember, it has more than seven. 70,000 square feet uh, roof. Roof. And now it has already started. Even in the industry, they are using those roofs for flower or this kind of thing. So I think, uh, as you said, waste in Dhaka city. There should be pragmatic program to use the waste just for the roof gardening. I think then, then the waste I think it will be finished, and it will. We, we look for the West. Where is West? Where is West? And I saw one very gentleman. He was former bureaucrats. I found in the Romna Park. He had uh, 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 poly bag, and with one uh, nirani, you know, nirani. And I found in the Romna Park. He was just collecting the very rotten. Um, uh, soil and biomass. Uh, in some places, you know, somewhere some heap of the rotten soil or biomass. So, yeah, those are already well rotten, compost. So he's just digging. I said, what are you doing this? Very uh, nasty area, dirty area. And he said, I was former bureaucrat. <laughs> so uh, gardening is my uh, hobby. And this soil is very good for, for growing uh, flowers and vegetables, even fruits. So thing is that we have the resource. How you use the resource? And how you make, how uh, you serious to use the resource? That is the thing, I think. Others waste, I, 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 I think waste is not waste. In Dhaka city, maybe almost 200 uh, two crore people, 20, billion, 20 million people are living. And every day they are making a lot of waste, urine or stool. Those are the resource. Even I found, I, I saw in Europe, in Switzerland, I found, they use this kind of materials. They start isolate the solid materials and the liquid materials. And the liquid materials, they recycle for irrigation purpose. Solid, they use for uh, 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 making uh, biofertilizer. So two, two crore people, the waste of two crore people is a big resource for Bangladesh. Thing is, will you say CCCC or will we you should, use we should, this? We should recommend something Sir. on that. We should recommend Dhaka City is not doing anything on that. <laughs> so scientists should come forward for uh, so, I share one I'm very weak, sir. So I think there should be some forum. Like this. Two crore people, and uh, I think two crore kg, maybe at least one crore kg per day. 0.6 kg per day, per person per day. 0.6 kg, that means 1.2 uh, uh, crore kg. It's the use. This is the thing. If you have Five, five children, whether you will think they are burden for you or you want to make uh, a resource of them. That depends on you. This is my comment. Yes, sir. Okay. You, you, very brief. Okay. Can I share one experience regarding this? Sir, can you please brief? Yes. Because now we are. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, just please. one minute, one or two minutes I need. <laughs> I, I visited uh, Vienna, you, you know, in the European country, Vienna. Uh, Austria, the capital of Australia. And uh, I found uh, in my house, uh, in front of my house, there are three beans. There are three beans. One beans for the kitchen waste, another beans uh, for, the, uh, for the paper, and another beans for the solid waste. And uh, I asked the municipality people who were collecting this, oh, what you are doing with this. Uh, they, they, they were telling us, we are making two things from this waste, kitchen waste. 
One is heat, which is very much required in European country, you know, in every house there is heat heater. They are producing heat from this kitchen waste. And another is the decomposed material, is for the organic matter for the heat. So, if we can, can take one project or something like this by the, uh, by the mayor of Dhaka city, he can, he can give three bins to every houses. Uh, please uh, put your kitchen waste here. Uh, and the papers here. There is a, and, there and is, there is a, I, I, I just tell, there is a very interesting story. JICA started that project. Uh, in our university campus, they give us three beans, one yellow, one red, one green. Yeah, usually. Side by side, they given it to the uh, Bosti area also, uh, slum areas also. But what happens with the university people or educated people in Hatirpol or Danmondi, they did not use that, but the Bosti people, people use that. Use that. Mm -hmm. So, what is the message? I think it needs some motivation. But, but motivation. The, the thing what you have seen in Vienna, we started in the Dhaka city. I was involved, but it is not working, that I am telling. So, how to make it workable? You see, there is so many things to do in the Dhaka city, waste material, yeah. to be in a gold material, it can be done. But if we come forward, we have to be united, we have to do collectively, the scientists, then the uh, what bureaucrat people, the uh, administrative people will listen. There are so many examples for that. And last you see the, the field of Kalabagan, when the people come forward, then the Kalabagan field was open. And same way, there are so many fields that are going to be open. Eh? Anyway. So, there were a lot of discussions on solid waste, but probably we did not talk about the waste waters which are being generated from, again, urban cities. And again, uh, they also can be termed as a resource in the sense they have nutrients and plus you can supplement the irrigation water, again, something which uh, all metro cities should be planning for. I think uh, we had some very lively discussion today because we took advantage of the absence of speakers and had a lot of discussion. <laughs> and I'm thankful to all of you and all the speakers in particular who were here and uh, made some excellent presentations. Uh, agriculture, you know, it, you know it requires very local solutions, though the problem is, uh, climate change problem is global, but you have to go in for local solutions and that I think we had a lot of discussion on that. Uh, so I would at this uh, Ankhya, I'd like to stop here and uh, I thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to be here, share <coughs> this uh, platform with you and uh, with this uh, we close the session and we break for lunch and we are supposed to be back here at 13.56, that is almost. Any, any announcement? No, thank you very much, uh, Chairman and the rapporteur uh, to conduct this session. So, we are uh, breaking time, but what time uh, we can come back? Uh, lunch will be ready uh, from now, but there is a, some prayer break also. Meet again in 2.30.